time we saw Fernando Guerrero here on Showtime was in April of last year when the 26-year-old fighter challenged Peter Quillen for his 160-pound strap. Guerrero ended up being decked four times before being stopped in the seventh. He cited the fact that his trainer at the time, Virgil Hunter, not being in his corner due to other commitments was one of the reasons for his poor performance. However, in his first bout with new trainer Nacho Salcedo last November, he was dropped by Ray Gatica in the first round and staggered in the eighth and tenth frames, yet he escaped with a contentious unanimous decision. He is fully cognizant of the fact that he needs to impress here tonight if he hopes to continue to receive this kind of national exposure. Yeah, Guerrero has had a career as a brilliant amateur and a winning as a pro. Of course, one of the fighters on our Showbox series who was dramatically successful. A career that, as we talked about at the fighter meetings, looked touched by greatness. It looked like it was just going to sail through. It did. He hit some reefs along the way, and he said he's had to adjust to it, but he thinks he has. His opponent, popular Montreal slugger David Lemieux, no stranger to the Bell Center. He's rung more than a few bells in what has, for the most part, been hospitable surroundings with all 11 of his victories in this building brought to you by the letters KO. However, it has also played host to his two losses against his most accomplished opponents, Marco Antonio Rubio, who knocked Lemieux down for the only time in his career, and former 154-pound titleist and first Haitian champ Joe Alcine. Tonight, he looks to extend his six-fight win streak and move one step closer to a potential shot and an alphabet belt. Here's the numbers for this matchup. Well, you wouldn't think you'd look at the ages of these fighters, but we need to because even though they're so young, 25 and 27, they both acknowledge this is literally a crossroads fight. They very badly need to win to stay in the category of contender. And here once again with the official introductions, the man on the microphone, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Bell Center here in Montreal, we present our next special attraction brought to you by Group Yvonne Michel and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the NABF, the president and supervisor in attendance, Dwayne Ford. Introducing to you our judges scoring the bout from ringside, Les Juges pour ce combat. From Canada, Nicolas Eno. From New Mexico in the United States, Esther Lopez. And from Canada, Pasquale Procopio. And our referee in charge of the bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Michael Griffin. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant NABO Middleweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner. Don Lacroix Blue, wearing red, white, and blue trunks, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, by way of Ige in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at already 159 pounds. His record stands at 26 wins, two losses, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the former world title challenger, Ville Acuyer Fernando Guerrero. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner, Don Lacroix Bruges, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. His hard hitting record stands at 31 wins, two losses, 29 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ranked the IBF number eight middleweight in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the popular and hard hitting contender, Vuye Akulye David Lemieux. <laughs> Once again, our referee in charge. Now to give instruction, Michael Griffin. You men receive my instructions. Obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. I want you to touch gloves now, man. You're boxing at the bell. God bless you both. Referee for this scheduled 12 rounder is Michael Griffin. 
Fernando Ganetta told us he wanted to be the first Dominican middleweight champion. Mr. Boxopedia, Steve Farrant, had said, hey, not so fast. Your man, Julio Cesar Green, beat you to it when he defeated William Joppe. Meanwhile, David Lemieux holds a Canadian record for consecutive knockouts with 20, including the only recognizable self he's faced in Hector Camacho Jr. The bell and round one. Could be some fireworks here. Both guys have are uh, known, known to have some pretty heavy hands, not great chins, and uh, <laughs> tend to get hit with punches they shouldn't get hit with. So you know you could be see some fireworks here in this kind of fight. That would be a recipe for it. <laughs> yeah. Lemieux has a fantastic left hook that he will want to uh, unfurl against Guerrero. And Guerrero's right hook is a very good punch. Lemieux going down for the only time in his career against Rubio, while Fernando Guerrero has been down a total of 10 times already, including in his last fight, controversial decision win, and what was supposed to be a bounce back bout against Gatica. But somehow Guerrero able to sway the judges in giving him the decision. Come out really busy with the jab, did Guerrero. You don't usually see that from a southpaw, but he's. In that fight against Rubio, his first loss, Lemieux's trainer at the time, Russ Amber, throwing in the towel in the seventh round, feeling that Lemieux had had enough. Shortly thereafter, they parted ways due to philosophical differences, and now he is being trained by Mark Ramsey, who also trains as Jean Pascal. So Lemieux doing a little bit of what Charlie Ota did last fight. He's got to punch his way in. A lot of it seems he's trying to cut distance behind nothing. I mean, Guerrero is not just going to let him in uh, if he doesn't work his way in behind some punches. Lemieux has a very good jab when he uses it, but to jab his way in, but he's not using it right now. Overhand right got there by Lemieux. He is right hand is not his main punch of choice when it comes to power, but he has a decent one. Under a minute remaining in the opening round. High guard employed by Lemieux, Guerrero, utilizing footwork along the ropes. Angus. Fans here in Montreal thought that should have been a knockdown. Now Lemieux attacking the body, going upstairs with a left hand. It seemed he did touch uh, Guerrero with a left hook in, in that clutch. Let's see if, oh. Straight okay. right hand through the guard, a left through the guard, and now Lemieux. Tony Guerrero was just, uh, Lemieux was just looking for his moment to pounce. Lemieux has recorded 11 first round KOs and Guerrero is down again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You all right? Pick up your hand. Five. That's the end of round one. And when they say again, it's something Guerrero has seen time and again his career Al he's been down a total of 11 times and uh, goes down here in round one that's been a big issue for him and it was early in this fight we'll see what was officially yeah, called a knockdown there may have been two of them actually there's a left hook and he would hit the canvas after beautiful left hook very short you see how short he threw that left hook yeah he threw it very very effectively and another look will show, as Paulie pointed out, how compact that punch was. And he is a great left hook artist. This is what he does. And uh, Guerrero was in big trouble. One more look will show you how David Lemieux was able to get that hook in. It's a very short punch. And it was a great counter because he had full commitment from Guerrero. Guerrero was looking to throw a one-two. Lemieux got under the straight left hand while throwing his own left hook over the top of the jab. Round two and Guerrero comes out firing. So he had Guerrero's full cooperation in stepping in and walking into the counter. So a frenetic start to this 160 pound affair. Lemieux walks into that left hand from Guerrero. 
Guerrero was actually controlling round one to a degree with his jab, and Lemieux had landed virtually nothing until he got that big hook in. Lemieux working the body, going upstairs, solid left hook, and Guerrero gets out of the way, but still along the ropes. David Lemieux is a, a, a very exciting fighter to watch. He is, you know, he's got a hell-bent for leather style that is just fun to look at. And sometimes it gets him in trouble defensively, but it's fun to watch. Yeah, because a lot of times he's looking to throw a lot of power without setting it up, but he keeps his punches short when he does get them off. But he, does, he goes zero to 60 so fast. I mean, he goes from doing nothing to just <laughs> unleashing a flurry of power shots, and that's what makes him exciting. Lemieux walking down Guerrero. Minute 45 left in the round. The crowd beginning to rally behind one of their own. Fernando Guerrero trying to find something that he can do to counter that can keep Lemieux off him. Lemieux's 14th appearance here at the Bell Center off to a very promising start against Fernando Guerrero. Guerrero fought against Peter Quillen for the most part on the outside. He's doing it again tonight. This is not the place he wants to be. He wants to be in the inside. That hook hurt him. And again, another left hook in the guard. Now attacking the body, the right hand, another left. And it's all David Lemieux here in round two. Attacking the body like it's filled with candy. And Guerrero standing up and eats another left hook. Guerrero cut now. I think he's cut over his right eye. Guerrero absorbing all kinds of punishment now, bleeding from the right eye. And that's ruled a slip. Oh, bleeding profusely from the right eye. With under 30 seconds left in the second. And he smells blood here. He's a mercenary, but then gets stopped in his tracks with that short straight left by Guerrero. Ten seconds left in another action-packed round. Guerrero takes a knee. Guerrero down for the second time in the fight. Late in the round. Early in the round, Guerrero got hurt with that right hand by Lemieux. There may have been a left hook in there before that, and he was in trouble against the ropes. And Lemieux continuing the assault, using those wicked left hooks, among other things. And then Guerrero would hit the canvas here. He'd already had, his eye is cut, and Lemieux cranking up those uppercuts and hooks and working very well when he's on the ropes. And again, the same thing. Uh, there's the aggression of David Lemieux. And when he smells the blood, he's going in for the kill, and uh, so to speak. And uh, you know, late in, the, late in the round, he was able to score the second knockdown of the fight for him. Two rounds in the books, two knockdowns for David Lemieux coming off a seventh round TKO win against Jose Torres in his last fight last November. Torres was knocked down an incredible seven yeah. times in that fight. There's something Lemieux is doing. Every time Guerrero was looking to throw that one two, Lemieux is almost seeing the hitch in it and letting and slipping the jab and throwing the left hook, sort of how he hurt him in the first round. Guerrero's gonna do a better job of disguising that one two when he throws it. Lemieux gets underneath the jab and throws his left hook. Straight right through the guard, backs up Guerrero. Guerrero's brother Alex is an undefeated cruiserweight. Boxing's a part of their DNA, but right now he is having a big issue in what is an important fight for him. Yeah, he's having his DNA rearranged by some of these shots, yeah. courtesy of David Lemieux. Stiff jab by Lemieux. There's an old school feel about David Lemieux. The yeah. Old school shorts. Yep. Old school types, killer instinct and style. Left hook behind the guard by Lemieux. Guerrero 
slips out of harm's way, resets momentarily, then backs up and takes a knee. Can't see out of that eye. That's a knockdown, that's a knockdown. And it's rolled a knockdown. I gotta give you a count. That's a knockdown. 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 Are you ready to continue? Guerrero yeah. very okay, concerned. That's a knockdown, eh? okay. Okay. So three rounds, three Box. knockdowns. And immediately Lemieux goes on the attack again, loading up at the right and the left, attacking the body ferociously, going upstairs. Guerrero comes back with one right hand and another, but he is eating all kinds of heavy artillery, but tags Lemieux with the left hook. Guerrero's oh, got the right idea there. He's got to try to punch inside of him. He's got to stay inside. Right In scintillating fashion, David Lemieux records his 30th knockout. Berman Stiburn, a guy who knows a knockout when he sees it, the new heavyweight champion, celebrating David Lemieux's very impressive performance here tonight, vanquishing Fernando Guerrero in violent fashion. The performance speaks for itself, guys. I mean, he has a dynamic style about him, an incredible sense of killer instinct, and doesn't sugarcoat it. He really goes from zero to 60, like I said, in, in such a dramatic fashion and throwing all power shots. You see them embracing here. And both these fighters understood at the meetings how important it was to each one, and a special moment there as they embrace. It, in this round, Guerrero would go down a couple of times, and this is where the first knockdown happened. When Lemieux has you on the ropes, he just cranks up those hooks to the body and the head. Sometimes he squares himself up and can be hit, but his, his, his attack is so relentless that you just can't, you can't keep him off you. And there is Guerrero taking a knee, and this is where Michael Griffin would call that a knockdown because of the punches that had been landed, even though the doctor checked on the cut. And he had to call it that because he took a knee. Now, the stoppage of this fight, the uppercut from Lemieux, yes, he's known as a left hook artist for the most part, but he's got some power in the right hand, both in his straight right and that uppercut. We'll take another look at it. So Lemieux's not a one-trick pony. He, he's not a, a one-dimensional attacker. See, he gives you the hook, but He's looking for anything that will land, and there's the beautiful uppercut on the inside. He is an exciting fighter to watch, a 25-year-old who knows how to get the job done and knows how to finish. And he basks in the glory of his home crowd here tonight. Picks up his 12th victory here at the Bell Center, all via form of a knockout. And I know Peter Quillen may be defending his title against Daniel Jacobs. Can you imagine the amount of knockdowns between Lemieux and Quillen if they ever met? Let's take a look at the show stats, Al. That would be a, a battle of the left hooks. You look at the numbers and clearly, uh, Lemieux landing not just more punches, but the power of those punches they landed were extraordinary. And many of those uh, left hooks to both the body and the head. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 56 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Michael Griffin, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout. Then David Nenu. Let's go to Jim Gray standing by with the winner. All right, Mo, thank you very much. David, congratulations. You have now knocked down your opponent 11 times in the last two fights. Describe the onslaught tonight. Uh, the results uh, in the ring 
are the, my dedication and my trainings in my life. Uh, everything I give it to, the, to my career. I do my best to perform the best for my friends and fans, for my family. I respect people, so I always give my 100% in the ring. I always want to look at my best. I want to put my hat off to Fernando Guerrero. He is a great fighter. I respect him a lot, regardless of the outcome of the fight. He's a great fighter. I've studied him for many, many months uh, prior to this fight. So I'm extremely happy for the outcome of the fight. It was, uh, we worked very hard for this. At what point, David, did you recognize that your aggression would be successful? Excuse At me? what point did you recognize that your aggression and just keep going after him would be successful? Uh, I've never been a quitter. Uh, I've always worked hard, regardless of the obstacles I've had in my life. Uh, I'm determined to be world champion, to remain world champion, and not to, to, to quit on my, on my thoughts and on my vision. So I'm always going to be successful, whatever I do. And what about perhaps fighting the winner of Danny Jacobs and Peter Quillen? I would, would like to do that? Of course, I would love to fight anybody in the world at 160. I have no problem with any fighting anybody. And what, what part of your game do you feel you have to improve at? At what part? Yes, what part? I always have to improve in everything. There's always something to improve. Once uh, there's no more improvements, it's time to hang up the gloves and to, to quit boxing. There's always things to improve. There's always defense. There's always technique. There's always perfection. There's always power. There's a whole bunch of things to, to improve. David, finally, take a look at this monitor and describe for us the end of the fight. Sorry? Describe for us the end of the fight right here on the monitor. Uh, I uh, pretty well know it was over, that he wasn't going to be able to recover. I knew Fernando Guerrero is, uh, is a very strong fighter, very tough. You know, he's been, he's been down ma many times and he always keeps getting back up. So I wasn't surprised that he would get back up. But once I started to land my shots, I could see it in his eyes that the game started to change. Congratulations. I know the fans here in Montreal love seeing you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, Mo, back to you. Thank you very much, Jim. Fan favorite, fan friendly style of David Lemieux, a bona fide knockout artist. As we look at the show stats, Al. Yeah, those are power punches. That means anything other than a jab. And of course, many of those are body punches. Lemieux with a huge edge over the short distance of this fight. So here in the home of the...